Welcome to Module 12, Altered States of Development. We'll get right started here, started right here, with looking at what we're going to see. Okay, we'll see Down Syndrome, or Trisomy 21. We'll see Turner Syndrome, where you are missing an X. We'll see Kleinfelter, where you have an extra X. You'll see Acromegaly and Gigantism, having to do with growth hormone. Dwarfism, where it's less... Uh, growth hormone or a, a chondroplasia, depending on what we're talking about. Either way, small. Altered sexual development. So you're talking about testicular issues, maybe hypo or epispadias uh, for the urine flow, polycystic kidney disease, and uh, there's some pretty nice gross specimens on that. Sickle cell, everybody I think is fairly familiar with that blood disease or blood uh, not necessarily even a disease, a, a blood adaptation possibly. Scoliosis, okay, that would be the spine that doesn't go completely straight. And tetralogy of Fallot, as in four things that are not normal. Okay, Down syndrome, very uh, well known. Did you know that it is? Trisomy 21, as in three number 21 chromosomes. Yes, you probably did know that. And that they have physical and mental disorders. Nowadays, 80% of them, of the Down syndrome patients, are reaching the age of 60 years old. So that is, oh, about 15 years less than the uh, normal life expectancy, but it is quite a bit more than it used to be. 5,000 babies born in the U.S. per year with Down syndrome is quite a few. Now, as far as how they're getting it, uh, 95, well, I guess the pathophysiology, really, 95% of Down syndrome are actually non-disjunctions, okay? As in sticky chromosomes. We'll look at that, I think, in a second, maybe not. But 1% uh, are mosaic, and 4% are translocations, where chromosome 14 has extra 21 genes on it. Alrighty, they called Robert Sony and translocations. I don't really want to go into that too much at the moment. <laughs> okay, causes. Okay, we already said that it is a chromosomal disorder in chromosome 21, and this is interesting because as the maternal age goes up then so does the chances of having a child with down syndrome so the the magic number here is number 35 really or 35 years old because before 35 years old i don't remember the exact number but uh, the chance of getting someone with down syndrome is maybe one in 1200 or something like that um, as it starts getting closer and closer and you can see it it's if this was a kind of a curve it would be kind of like chances chances and then when you hit number 35 years old it kind of starts going steeply up like that as far as you know as the maternal age goes further and further up so does the incidence of having a Down's syndrome child and if you look at number at 45 years old you're talking one in 30 chances which it's not uh, great chances, unless, of course, it was a lottery, and then you'd be pretty happy about that. Okay, small head with flat facial features. So if you look at the size of the Down's child, then that head is smaller than a normal baby's head. Flat facial features basically means that, you know, everything is kind of flat on the faces, not a whole lot of protrusion okay the slanted eyes okay these epicanthal folds in here are uh are more, oops are more slanted and uh we, well it makes it look like they're slanted and the single crease in the palm of the hand they used to call it a simian crease that's not really politically correct anymore uh, they call it a a single crease in the palm of the hand because simian actually means ape and that's not really cool to pick on Down's kids. Anyway, heart defects. Uh, yes, they do tend to have more heart defects. 
uh, leukemia, especially acute lymphocytic leukemia, and Alzheimer's and dementia. Okay, 25% over the age of 35, again, have Alzheimer's. That is obviously quite a huge percentage of any population to have one disease. So the, the ALL and the Alzheimer's and the heart defects are obviously pretty significant. Okay, may have decreased IQ and speech difficulties. Usually they have decreased IQ and speech difficulties. And... Uh, how do we test it? Well, ultrasound or amniocentesis. Amniocentesis is, is a lot more diagnostic for uh, Down syndrome when they test, test, the, uh, test the fluid um, in the amnion, I guess. All right, and of course the karyotype test is definitely confirmational because I'll show you on the next page where you can literally see the chromosomes uh, that there's three of them. So if these are all your chromosomes in your in your karyotype test on this page, then you can see where you know you have two, 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 two. You go through the whole thing, and on chromosome number 21, you see three number 21 chromosomes, and that of course is the issue. There is that single palmar crease. <clears throat> that we, you would see go straight across. Go check your own hand, see if you have Downs maybe. Okay, Kleinfelter syndrome. Okay, these are males because they are an XY, but they have an extra X sitting there. Okay, so what they do is they have both male and female um, sexual characteristics. Okay, so they, they have less testosterone than males with alkaline filters and less body and facial hair. Gynecomastia uh, means that he actually has a, a breast development, okay, as in larger, larger breasts like a female would, and therefore it increases his risk of breast cancer, okay. Weak muscles and bones because of the decreased testosterone. And shy, probably, it doesn't necessarily mean it, but uh, when when males tend to look a, a lot more like females, they, they may be more shy, and of course the testosterone definitely has an effect on aggressive aggressiveness and that sort of thing. So, um, infertile most of the time, 95 to 99% because of the low sperm count, because they have small testes. Is that even mentioned on here? I didn't see that on here, but they have they have small testes. Okay. And therefore a low sperm count also. Okay. Impaired language development. You will I guess see that with uh, with uh, Kleinfelter syndrome. Alright. Anyway, so clinical exam you can see oh here it is small testicular size up here. You can see the small testes clinically looking at somebody. You can kind of see their pubic hair in a, in, a fem, in a more female pattern than male. Breast development, um, not as many hairs, frontal baldness. Again, not a lot of hairs. The shoulders are more narrow, um, but the hips are wider. And then you see long arms and long legs. Okay, so Kleinfelter syndrome. Obviously, you can chromatone, chromosome test it, and you will see that there's an extra X there, and you can test the hormones to find out, for example, the decreased testosterone. Okay, so how do you treat that? Well, one of the main things that you see from all of these symptoms is due to because are due these symptoms are due to not having enough testosterone, so you want to replace the testosterone. That makes sense, and if there's an issue with with um, language development then of course speech pathologists would deal with that okay now if you look here um, x's are bigger so you have these you know big x right here big x right here and the little y okay because of the presence of that little while it that little y it is 
a male and the X is extra okay otherwise it would have been a female but and that would have been normal with the little Y but you can't have that it the little Y actually makes it a male right here's just another picture of the same thing I don't think well the only thing in here I guess is osteoporosis again because that decreased test decreased testosterone and feminine fat distribution as in wider hips okay and there is a picture of somebody with Klinefelter syndrome you can see the narrow shoulders a lack of hair the female breast development okay Turner syndrome is kind of the other way around right so now there's only one X instead of that second X is just simply not there uh, one in 2500 worldwide female births so that's not uncommon that's for sure okay um, I already said that X only in other words missing an X chromosome okay so without an the extra X that manifests itself phenotypically is short no menstrual periods or irregular menstrual periods no breast development and uh, the nipples are actually widely spaced apart you can see way over here okay infertile low posterior hairline so in the back the hairline doesn't go that far back and then there's the webbed neck okay if you look at this neck right here you can see where it's kind of webbed out a little bit it's kind of pushed out there and the infants have swollen hands and feet which honestly I'm not sure how anybody would know since all infants seem to have big puffy hands and feet but whatever okay again clinical you can see these these uh, signs alrighty the um, low hairline in the back if you're really looking the uh, photo skin makes that webbed neck the aorta by the way has a constriction in it which is obviously not good for flow okay poor breast development and widely spaced nipples on that the thorax didn't mention that is shield shaped as in a kind of uh, rounds I guess okay small fingernails uh, the ovaries are really rudimentary they say as in very immature and uh, no menstruation or very few menstruations and they get nevi or little brown spots on them okay so how do you uh, um, test that again clinical which I was just saying chromosomal testing because you will see the lack of the X chromosome and just like with males the treatment is to replace what's missing which is in this case growth hormone and estrogen and you see that absence of a of a Y chromosome you see the absence of another X chromosome so there's only one X sitting there and I believe this is the exact same picture so there's nothing else to say on that Okay, if you look right here, you can see the webbed neck, and I guess those are very puffy feet and very puffy toes, especially in here. In that. Okay. All right, growth hormone. Let's look at that again. Uh, what organ produces growth hormone? Do you remember? Okay, anterior pituitary gland, as in a lot of hormones produced there. Oops. What does it do? It makes you grow. Okay. Let's so that leads us into gigantism and acromegaly. In either case, you have too much growth hormone. What their difference really is is when you have too much growth hormone. Okay. So if you are a child and you have too much 
growth hormone, then you get really big, you get really tall. Once you are done growing and these epiphyseal plates have closed, then you can't grow tall anymore, so instead you grow wide. Okay, and, and your bones just get really wide. How would you cause that? Well, one cause would be a pituitary adenoma, as in that uh, tumors that we talked about a uh, module or two ago, where uh, in the pituitary gland you get the, 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 the tumor and growth hormone was one of the common ones, either growth hormone or ACTH or prolactin, but uh, now we're talking specifically about growth hormone in this case. Okay, what else happens other than getting really big and tall? Because that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Well, enlarged organs and other structures. Okay, so your head gets bigger, your jaws get bigger, if we're talking about acromegaly. Um, obviously, if you're talking about just either or as you get larger your organs get larger and that actually is a very very big problem especially if one of those organs is your heart because the uh, the heart is not made despite its size to pump as much as as it would need to to feed somebody here like Andre the Giant right and it gets a, a very hypertrophic heart and therefore reduces blood flow. Anyway, and other structures. Again, if you are an adult and have too much growth hormone, it leads to acromegaly. So that's what the, the bodybuilders look like. They get the really the big jaw and their head gets bigger and you know bones start actually getting wider, like I said. Okay hyperglycemia okay in gigantism and acromegaly um, you get hyperglycemia the reason is is growth hormone actually inhibits the uptake of glucose okay so if you have too much hormone too much growth hormone you're really inhibiting glucose uptake and therefore it's staying in your blood and hence hyperglycemia okay it also if that wasn't bad enough it increases um, production of of glucose in the liver as in taking it from glycogen back into glucose and sticking it back in the blood and eventually you have insulin resistance because of the constant fighting that insulin has to do with this growth hormone which of course would lead to diabetes Okay, so how do you test for it? Well, test for growth hormone and see how much is there. And a CT will tell you also about not only your bones, but it will tell you about you know the, the heart and kidneys and any other organs that may be in jeopardy of being too large. Okay, now if it's because of a pituitary adenoma, then obviously the trick is to do a surgery, Hypo, hypo, blah, 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 what is that called? Hypophysectomy, um, and then of course meds to block your excess growth hormone. Okay, let's look the other way. Talking about dwarfism, as in not having enough growth hormone. Okay, here's the key: four feet ten inches or less is considered a dwarf. Alrighty, there are a lot of different reasons that dwarfism is caused, and, but 70% of them are achondroplasia. Okay, well, what is achondroplasia? A means without, chondro is, is cartilage, okay, and plasia is growth, right? So if you look at that achondroplasia down here, you will see that it is an autosomal dominant inherited disease most of the time and it uh, does mean without cartilage problem is with ossification okay so if you if you know about bones and how they grow first they will grow cartilage and then 
they will grow the hard layer over that cartilage okay so it's the ossification that's a problem and without the or not that you have no cartilage but without a lot of cartilage then the bone can't grow either and, and what we're really talking about is long bones here in the epiphyseal plates right okay um, spontaneous mutation is actually seven-eighths of the time so even though we for some reason talk about the autosomal dominant um, achondroplasia that's only one-eighth of the time where it is the autosomal dominant disease um, the 1 in 25,000 births are most of the time by far spontaneous mutation that causes the uh, chondral sites not to proliferate okay the other one of course is, is simply decreased growth hormone that's exactly opposite of gigantism all right and I'll show you in a minute here on why and, and they actually look different than for the reason whether it's decreased growth hormone or achondroplasia it certainly look different than primordial dwarfism I would encourage you to go back to the PowerPoint that's online and actually look up this uh, this video and watch it it's it's not that long it's only four minutes and it's very interesting and once you see primordial dwarfism I don't think